So you just checked out the performance of the new RTX 2080 Ti and you're like, oh my god, somebody call the sex police. But then you had a look at the price and you were like, <gasps> typing in on Google, how can I make money selling my body? Today <laughs> we're going to be checking out the new RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti by comparing them to the previous generations Pascal and Maxwell GPUs. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Kevin and this is my co-host Teddy and before we jump into today's video I just want to say a big thank you to Heraldus for making my new channel art. Uh, he's a great guy, graphics designer and I'll uh, put his links in the description down below so definitely go and check him out. So today's video is going to be looking at what your sub feeds probably filled up with, uh, the new Turing GPUs and how they compare, you know, price and performance wise relative to previous NVIDIA launches, so Pascal and Maxwell. So let's dive right into it then. So we're going to be looking at the three main factors that I like to consider, which is the price, performance and SLI ability, basically meaning how can you run multiple of these GPUs together. And this is mainly going to be focused on the high-end parts, as the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti are the only ones out right now. So let's start with Maxwell to Pascal, from the 900 series to the 10 series. The 970 launched with a price of 329 USD, that was its MSRP or Manufacturer Specified Retail Pricing. So 329 USD for the 970, the 980 coming in at 549 US dollars, and then about a year later, we got the 980 Ti coming in at 649. Keep in mind the Titan X came in at $1,000, but that wasn't very popular by comparison to the 980 Ti, which was much more affordable for a lot of people. Now the 970 boasted three-way SLI with the other three being able to do four-way SLI which was good to see and you could SLI all the rest of the range as well. They all use GDDR5 memory with the 970 and 980 having four gigabytes although there was some controversy around the 970 which did technically have four but a lot of people were saying it only had three and a half and the 980 Ti had six gigabytes with the Titan X having 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. And then Pascal came out, as you guys will hopefully remember if you've been into tech for at least a little while. Uh, there was a lot of hype around it and originally just launched with the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1080, which were received relatively well, I would say, quite well, uh, considering uh, most of NVIDIA's launches in the past. Now there was some confusion though, because NVIDIA this time had announced Founders Edition cards, which a lot of people didn't really understand it, because in the past they'd just done sort of reference models, uh, but now NVIDIA was selling them directly and selling them as the Founders Edition. So this was a different price, and it usually came at a premium over the MSRP. So just keep that in mind, but I'll try to give the pricing that these sort of settled on for most people out there. So the 1070 had an MSRP of 379 US dollars, while the Founders Edition was of $449, and that's about the price they all stayed in. All the add and board partner models like your MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte, they're all around that $449 price point for quite some time. The 1080 had an MSRP of $549 and a Founders Edition model of $699, which that 699 price was also mainly where the 1080 sat with all the third-party uh, GPUs for quite a while. It took about maybe, oh, I don't know, like nine months before those prices started even getting closer to MSRP, and that was usually more basic models of the cards, not those sort of decent gaming models, and of course, not the very high-end ones. Now they both came with 8 gigabytes of memory, but the 1080 had the faster GDDR5X memory compared to the more standard GDDR5 that the 1070 came with. But now let's talk about the performance, because that's really what the main thing is. 
Now the 1070 performed very well. I tested this when it first came out and I was quite impressed by it. Of course I tested the 900 series as well, but we're gonna compare the two together. So the 1070 pretty much matched, maybe just did a little bit worse than the 980 Ti, which was impressive at the time. And it blew a lot of us away that the 1070 was that good. Like it's a serious GPU. Uh, it, it not only beat the 980 Ti, or matched the 980 Ti, I should say, but it did it while having more memory, consuming less power, and had much better features such as a, a better updated I.O. with things like DisplayPort 1.4 and a bunch of other Pascal-specific features that maybe a few people used. But the main selling point was that the 1070 was cheaper than the 980 Ti. That's what most people care about is the price at the end of the day, performance and price. And the 1070 came in at about maybe like $100 USD cheaper than the 980 Ti. So that's why it made perfect sense for a lot of people to buy the 1070. Maybe not replace your 980 Ti with a 1070, but a lot of people who were considering buying something like a 980 Ti now looked at the 1070 and said, well, that's a bit cheaper and it's got about the same performance plus these other benefits, I may as well just buy that. So of course, the 1070 sold really well. Now the 1080 wasn't a slouch, but it also wasn't as good value by comparison to the 1070. It had about 10% better performance than the 1070, maybe 15% depending on the game. But a lot of people didn't feel it was worth paying like an extra one to 200 US dollars more for the 1080 for that sort of performance bump. So the, the 1070 was the main one really that was getting a lot of the attention. Not to say that people didn't buy the 1080 and it still had its place uh, for people that wanted to buy it, spend just a little bit more to get that 10 to 15% performance bump. A lot of people still did that and the 1080 was still a good card. Now it needs to be noted that NVIDIA also released the Titan XP. This is the one that we all called the XP because it was, just, it was officially called the Titan X, but it was Pascal based, so lots of reviewers just call, called it the Titan XP. Anyway, that launched with a price tag of 1200 US dollars. So that was just crazy, but it also had very, very good performance. So some people bought it, but for most people, it was just way, way too out of reach and uh, it didn't really go down that well for the most part. Fast forward to about a year later, and you have the GTX 1080 Ti coming out. Uh, this is sporting a lot of similarities with the Titan XP with 11 gigabytes of memory instead of the 12 you get with the Titan XP. Uh, GDR5X memory on a 352-bit bus compared to the 384 on the Titan XP. And it was it had a lot of similarities to it. It was basically a slightly cut down version. But the main thing was, the reduced price tag. It was coming in at 699 US dollars, which was still high. That's still quite a bit of money to spend on a graphics card, but considering the performance it was giving you, it, it pulled a lot of people over. And people that thought, mm, maybe I wouldn't spend that much on a GPU, they thought, okay, that's it's quite a lot of performance for that price tag. Maybe I'll splurge and maybe I'll go for it. And a lot of enthusiasts ran the 1080 Ti. I ran the 1080 Ti and it was a really good card. The performance jump up over the 1080 was enough to justify it since it was about a 30 to like 35% performance increase over the GTX 1080. And so that just was enough to justify it for many people paying that extra price. Now, as far as SLI goes, Nvidia did allow it on the 1070, 1080 and 1080 Ti. However, uh, they basically blocked it on all the cards under them, especially the 1060 was a big one that hurt a lot of people. Uh, so that wasn't good to see, but it was still available on these hiring cards. So that was there. And now we have the RTX GPUs, the RTX 2080 and the RTX 2080 Ti. And these cards, unfortunately, haven't gotten off to a good start so far. I haven't been able to get my hands on any yet, uh, unfortunately, because I only just moved here and I'm just trying to reestablish contacts. So I've been hitting up all the different companies, anyone from MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS, NVIDIA, whoever, if you're watching this video, if you want to send me one, that'd be great because I can make a video out of it and talk more about this. But as of right now, I don't have one. 
Anyway, I'm gonna be using uh, two benchmarks that I really trust, two videos that I really trust, which is one is by Hard Run Box, one is by Jared's Tech, both great YouTubers. I'll leave the links down below to their videos, the full videos, but I'm gonna be using their benchmarks to show a few things. And my reason for showing this is that a lot of people have been very upset with the pricing on the RTX GPU. So let's actually look at it further and see if it's really that bad compared to previous Nvidia launches. So the RTX 2070 is going to be coming in, which isn't out right now, it's going to be coming in at 499 MSRP or 599 for the Founders Edition, which will probably be the main price it sits at. So let's just say 600 US dollars will be the price of the 2070 for the most part. That puts the 2070 into like GTX 1080 territory in terms of pricing. And the 2080 is going to be coming in at 699 MSRP or 799 for the Founders Edition. And we do know this pricing because I've had a look around and a lot of the 2080s from the board partners are sitting at around the $800 mark. That's a lot of money. So... That's not very good. That's higher than what the 1080 Ti launched at, and it's about one to two hundred dollars higher than what the 1080 Ti is currently at. So that is quite the price premium, but that does not compare to the whopping <laughs> nine hundred and ninety-nine US dollar MSRP for the 2080 Ti, or twelve hundred dollar. Founders Edition price point, which is where all the AIB ones will be at, $1,200 for the 2080 Ti. You can basically think about it like this. NVIDIA, just pretend the names don't exist. NVIDIA has basically shifted them up. So the 2070 becomes like the 1080 level, the 2080 becomes the 1080 Ti level, and the 2080 Ti is like Titan X level, Titan XP level. That's, they've just shifted it all up a notch with the pricing and everything. That is a lot of money to pay for a graphics card. Now, they do come with the newer GDDR6 memory, which is faster than the previous GDDR5X memory, although they do have the same amount of it, with the 2070 and 2080 getting 8 gigabytes and the 2080 Ti having 11 gigabytes. They do offer some other features like ray tracing advantages, uh, but you can't take a, you can't do anything with them right now. So maybe that'll be something in the future that will make them uh, more appealing. But as of right now, you can't really do much with it. So let's just pretend it doesn't exist for right now. Maybe something in the future, but for anyone right now, it doesn't matter. So you're like, hold on though, Kevin. You're just bashing these new cards. The performance is really good though, right? Like, it's with that price tag, the performance must be crazy. And you're kind of half correct there. The performance on the 2080 Ti is crazy. But with that price tag, oh my goodness. It's... We can't talk about the 2070 right now because we don't have any benchmark numbers to work with. So let's just focus on the 2080 and 2080 Ti. Starting with... The 2080. So performance wise from the numbers I'm seeing, it's basically matching the 1080 Ti, going blow, blow for blow. You know, some games it does better, some games the 1080 Ti does better. Um, they seem fairly matched for the most part within the margin of error. But then you consider that the 1080 Ti is one to two hundred dollars cheaper. So remember back to what we talked about before. The 1070 came out and it was matching the 980 Ti. However, it was cheaper. Maybe $100 cheaper, $150 US cheaper than the 980 Ti. Now you have the 2080 comes out and it's matching the 1080 Ti, but it's $1 to $200 more expensive at the same time. Doesn't really seem that good for it, does it? And I'm quite disappointed really when it comes down to it that is not good uh it, it really needed to either be the same price or a cheaper if it would be possible but if it was the same price then maybe they can you could say well it comes with all these extra features and blah 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 that can justify to use this less power uh not by the same degree that the 1070 did to the 980 ti but it still does use less power so maybe you could say that but yeah but the 2080 Ti, on the other hand, that's where it just gets ridiculous. So the performance is huge. Like, it's absolutely nuts. It's pulling 
like a 40%, 30 to 40% gap over the 2080 and the 1080 Ti. That is huge. So impressive there. However, the price is ridiculous. It's twice, a, twice the price of a 1080 Ti. And it's almost twice the price of a uh, 2080. That is a huge price premium to pay for all that extra performance. Not only that, but now with the new uh, NVLink technology, uh, it's also changed. So now the 2070 won't be able to use it. So no, well, I'll just say SLI, even though it's the, not right, maybe the right term anymore, but you won't be able to do SLI on the 2070. You won't be able to run two of them. You only are able to run one of them. The 2080 and the 2080 Ti still will be able to do it. But you can see what NVIDIA is doing. They're squeezing it away. Soon you won't be able to run multiple cards. You'll just, you have to buy one, that's it. And they'll just make the cards increasingly more ridiculous in terms of the pricing and the power so that you have to just, if you need that extra power, you're just going to have to pay more and more for it. So it's not looking good. It's for the value for money standpoint. The 2080 makes no sense. It really doesn't. And neither does the 2080 Ti. If you're like an enthusiast that doesn't, you know, money isn't an issue, then of course you go for something like the 2080 Ti because the performance is so damn good. But for regular gamers or just PC enthusiasts like me, as as I've always told you guys, uh, I always just refer to myself as just a simple enthusiast. That's what I am. That is just way too much money. It's completely unaffordable. It's completely out of reach. And I just think it's a huge disappointment. But that's just the video I wanted to do, guys. I just wanted to make a sort of longer form video, uh, just talking about it, taking you back a little bit, because a lot of you guys are sort of just focused on this generation compared to last generation. But I thought, hey, let's go all the way back to Maxwell and then sort of compare. And that's what I was going for. Uh, But... Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd really like to know, what do you think about these RTX GPUs? How do you think they compare to Pascal? Do you think they're good value for money? Why or why not? And let me know, are you considering buying one? Like if you actually are, let me know your reasons. I'd really like to know. Now I thank you all for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.